Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The videos presented herein are based on the secret dreams of Muhammad Qasim, which he has been reluctant to share with others. The author of these videos have recently become aware of these secret dreams and are publicizing them under the premise that Qasim was commanded by Allah to share these dreams with the public. Despite his objection about doing so, Qasim's secret dreams are being made public in order to illustrate a more comprehensive picture of his identity and the role he will play near the end of times. We leave the viewer up to their own judgment. We believe that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the last and final messenger of Allah. Qasim says, After Pakistan attains and establishes the black fighter jets, which he believes could be the black standards mentioned in the hadiths, Pakistan displays their military prowess to the world by liberating Kashmir from subjugation and a renowned area within the Middle East. These machines of war deterred any nation from trying to overcome Pakistan. The world was in awe of Pakistan's technological prowess and these aircrafts acted as a deterrent for any other nation who sought to harm Pakistan. This is how Allah planned and gave Pakistan a peaceful time to develop and prepare for the looming threat of World War III. After the Muslims from around the world witnessed the black fighter jets, they start to make hijrah to Pakistan in droves of millions to live permanently and play their roles in rebuilding Islam. Pakistan becomes a nation enriched with Muslims from all over the world, from a variety of different cultures and backgrounds. A united Islamic nation where not a person's ethnicity nor their race mattered, regardless of whether you were European, African, East or South Asian, South American or Middle Eastern, we live together as brothers. The previous ethos of racism was shattered between the Muslim brethren and the light of the true Islam enriched the hearts and minds of the citizens of this nation. Muslims who previously detested each other were now working together as brothers towards a common goal. And the people of the world began to say that not only is it hard to stop Qasim but it is impossible because Allah himself is guiding and protecting him and his Allah helped him and changed his dreams into reality. During Pakistan's progression towards a hyperpower, Qasim sees that the citizens of Pakistan ask him to lead the Muslim Ummah. In these dreams, he continually denies the request, stating that, I will not take up such a position. In one dream, he sees that the people keep persisting him to take up the mantle of leadership for the entire Ummah, and he finally gives in to the pressure and asserts, if Prophet Muhammad وسلم, asks me to lead the Ummah, only then will I take this responsibility. Then Qasim and his companions visit Medina and Qasim is sent into Masjid al-Nabawi to the tomb of Prophet Muhammad وسلم. Qasim says, The thoughts in my mind at this time were that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will refuse the request of the people as I don't consider myself capable of handling such an important task of leadership. But Prophet Muhammad وسلم, instead commands Qasim to lead the entire Muslim Ummah and he وسلم, gives Qasim a sword resembling a shining sword from the ancient times. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, tells Qasim to go to Makkah and give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and lead the Muslim Ummah. At this point, Qasim feels distressed as he cannot go back to his companions with the sword for if he does, then they will realize that Prophet Muhammad has commanded Qasim to accept the position of a leader Khalifatullah for the Muslim Ummah. He says, I fear that the people will ask me what had happened and I would have to answer in truth and so I avoid the people who had come with me I exit through a path where I wouldn't be sighted and I leave my companions and I flee to Makkah. At Makkah, I see myself performing Umrah and Tawaf. And then, some of the people there identify me. 
and they see the sword in my hand. There will be a dispute following the death of a Khalifa, and a man of the Banu Hashim will flee from al Madinah to Mecca, fearing that people will try to make him the Khalifa. Recognizing him as the Mahdi, some of the people of Mecca will come to him and will bring him out against his will, and they will pledge allegiance to him between the corner, Blackstone, and the Makam. Sunan Abi Dawood, Hadith, 4285, Musnad Ahmad, Volume 6, Page 316.